This video series is a remake of a plot explanation I made for 13 Sentinels back in 2020 with the original Western launch. I'm remaking it now due to the Switch port being released and also because the original had poor audio quality. Please enjoy and be wary of spoilers throughout the entirety of these seven videos. The story starts in the year 2187 with the death of Kengo Ogata, father of Nenji Ogata and the CEO of Shigishima Industries. However, a professor by the name of Chihiro Murimura backs up his memories and personality to create an AI copy of him, whom she consults for advice as she works on her terraforming project. Kengo convinces her to sell nanomachine technology on the black market to earn funds, but these nanomachines end up going haywire and create an infection that dooms humanity. As a result of this, Murimura and Shigishima come up with a plan to save it, Project Ark, where the few remaining survivors of humanity gather on a space colony and donate their DNA, which is propagated through space on self-replicating drones until they find hospitable planets. These planets are then terraformed to be more like Earth so that humans can live on them. Until that time, however, these humans are grown inside vats while their minds develop inside virtual reality simulations until they reach 20 years of age. Because the scientists on board the Ark couldn't decide what era to base the new reality in, they created five virtual sectors, each based on a different era. Sector 1 is 2089, Sector 2 is 2049, Sector 3 is 2009, Sector 4 is 19. 1969 and Sector 5 is 1929. To make the five worlds believable, the scientist in charge of creating them, a man named Tsukasa Okino, borrowed code from a game based on surviving attacks by monsters called Daimos, popular for its ability to generate a diverse and realistic population of NPCs. Let's backtrack to the space colony. A total of 15 survivors are left at the time DNA samples are taken from everyone. The 13 protagonists, along with Okino and an AI expert named Tamao Kurabe. There could have been a 16th in Megumi's Father, but unfortunately he was infected by the time he got to the colony and so was left behind. However, one of the survivors, A. Sekigahara, is revealed to be an assassin hired by Renya Goto to kill Chihiro to cover up the fact that Renya was using her work to launder money. But with the death of the team's leader, the researchers eventually start fighting over how best to use their remaining money and resources until a firefight breaks out and kills over half of them. During this time, a man named Tetsuya Ida is revealed to have been exploiting the feelings of a woman named Ryoko Shin Nome to make her do what he wanted. Learning this, she decides humanity is better off extinct and edits the simulation's code so that it will start generating demos before the simulation can end. The result is that the simulation is repeatedly wiped out by these monsters every 15 to 16 years. Upon being destroyed, the simulation resets. This is called looping. Over 300 loops occur before the earliest events we see inside these sectors. These demos are modeled after Shikishima machinery used to terraform planets. The actual beginning of the story is two loops before the existing protagonist come to life. The Juro, Izumi, Chihiro, Morimura and Tsukasa Okino of this loop fail to stop the kaiju in their own sector, Sector 1, but find an underground supercomputer in Sector 3. Androids attack them before they can figure out a plan of action and Okino is forced to send the others to a newly discovered Sector 0. Instead of a new error though, the two find themselves in Sector 1 again, now 16 years in the past. This is because Sector 0 is where the information needed to create the five other sectors is stored. Backing yourself up to Sector 0 means that you are also restored exactly as you were at the time when the next loop begins, at the cost of turning into an AI instead of a human hooked up to a simulation. Juro and Chihiro don't know this however, and think they've just gone back in time. They attempt to stop the Daimos by destroying Shigishima's research laboratories and researchers. The pair are separated in the escape and fail to stop the invasion. While Chihiro tries to protect the victims she can find, i.e. the current clones, Juro realises the Daimos are being called by the machines implanted in their heads and starts killing them in an attempt to stop the monsters. Chihiro kills him in order to stop him, but he already backed himself up to Sector Zero before his killing spree. Chihiro and the survivors try to fight off the Daimos with mechs, but fail. Chihiro is forced to send as many of them as possible to Sector Zero to try again in the next loop, but has no time to back herself up before the Daimos kill her. This means the 16-year-old Chihiro who appears at the start of the next loop is technically still the one from the first loop discussed, as she doesn't remember anything that happened in this middle one. The last teenager her past self saved, Tetsuya Ida, survives the trip, but an explosion kills the others as they're being uploaded, meaning their data is in complete and thus unable to be restored automatically. Upon learning this, Ida chooses to tell Chihiro that Juro killed them. A few years later, she finds and kills him as revenge. In the meantime, however, Ida is able to find the data of those deceased in Sector Zero and able to bring them back, albeit in an incomplete state. He revives four of them, Keitaro, Miura, and Takatoshi Hijiyama, who he turns into AIs for autonomous sentinels as a patchwork fix for how their information was corrupted, Tamao Kurabe, who he eventually builds an android body for, and finally turns 
Tomi Kisaragi, the girl he loved in the previous loop. He plans to implant her mind in the current Tomi Kisaragi, but this one refuses to rob the current Tomi of her life. Ida grants this Tomi's wish of also being installed in the Sentinel, but wishing to make a fresh start with a human Tomi, plans to sabotage the Sentinels to hasten their defeat and kickstart a new loop. To this end, he manipulates the current Ryokushin no Mei, who is also infatuated with him, into installing a virus called DD426 into her brother figure Sentinel. The activation of the virus causes it to spread and cripple all Sentinels used in the battle instantly. Jihiro, who is monitoring the fight, forces the Sentinels to warp to random sectors to get them away from the front lines, and with this, Sector 2 is lost. Because the government of Sector 1 tried to nuke the country to kill the Daimos and failed, Sector 1 was already lost and irradiated to boot. The current duo lands in Sector 3, currently 2024, and befriends the current Tomi Kisaragi and Megumi Yakushiji, eventually entering a relationship with the latter. In time, however, the Daimos attack this Sector 2. He is unable to hold the invasion off and suffers brain damage due to being connected to the Sentinel for too long, causing him to lose his memories. Megumi, Juro, and Tomi are evacuated to Sector 4 in 1985. At this point, the bulk of the story finally kicks off. The fate of the previous Takatoshi Hijiyama is never shown in the story, but was revealed in an interview with George Kamitani. While Ida was able to restore everyone's data to some extent, Hijiyama's consciousness was more corrupted than the others, and even converting him into a Sentinel was unable to help. After the failed battle of Sector 2, he asked Okino to put him out of his misery and let the current Miura pilot his Sentinel instead, so he could protect his friend in spirit. This is Sentinel 19, and is indeed the one Miura uses in the final battle. Thanks for making it to the end of this segment. I'll see you in the next. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing to help the channel grow. But again, thank you for watching and as always, have a great day.